Hi, this is AP Calculus Review. We're going to do tangent line approximations. We're going to do it three ways. One from data using local linearity and points in and around a certain point. And then we're also going to do it from a graph using the derivative graph and trying to read points off of a derivative graph. And then also we're going to use implicitly defined functions or one implicitly defined function to show this. Now what do we need to write the equation of line? Well, we need slope. And then we also need a point. So to get the slope of the line, we can use our regular algebra, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or else we, from calculus now, we can use f prime. And so we need to, what do we need to write the equation of a line? Yeah, we need point and slope, or slope and point. Then we need to just plug it into the point-slope form. Point-slope form is here, big y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Don't simplify this. Once you plug in the values, you just go with it, okay? So, uh, and then you just have to figure out where you get your slope from and where do you get your point from. That will help us out to write the equation in this form. You also can use y equals mx plus b, but I like to just use point slope form. It's way easier, and you can just leave it. Okay, tangent line approximations using data. So here's data I used from a previous video. They have time and they have velocity. Now you may be given many, many different things that you need to analyze. However, they might ask you for estimate the derivative of what we're dealing with. Well, in this case, it's the velocity. So if I want to estimate v prime of 9, I'm looking for the tangent slope at, of v at 9. So what am I going to use? Well, people try to do this all different ways, but the first thing you should do is use the point of interest. The point of interest here is the 9, 8. Got to use that. Then the other points that you want to use, well, it's local linearity, so it better be in here close. Now you can analyze the data, do all this other stuff, but really you're just trying to get in here close. So pick a next two point along with our point of interest. So it might be either at time equal to 6 or it may be with time equal to 12. You make the choice, but you have to make the choice and move on. All right? So <clears throat> local linearity. We pick one of those points. I'm going to use t equal to 6 along with t equal to 9 to find and estimate the slope in and around that area. I'm going to get two totally different answers if I pick 9 and 12 and 6 and 9. However, that's not what we're really looking for. We're just trying to find the slope in and around this area. So if I use 6 and 9, I'm going to do, oh, they switch them around sometimes. So the velocity is bottom on the chart, but it's in the numerator when you write the slope. Okay, so I picked those points, 18 minus 8. Just make sure you do it in the correct order. Be consistent. And then this is negative 3 and a third. I should use negative 10 thirds, but I wrote negative 3 and a third there for some unknown reason. All right, now the next one is V prime of 13. V prime of 13, well, where is that? Well, it's between 12 and 15. I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, sorry. But if we do 12 and 15 and find that slope, we'll be much uh, better off. So we're doing local linearity. This value 13 is not exactly in our chart. It's in between. That makes it even easier to make a choice because you just have one choice. And you pick those two and you find the slope from it. There it is. So I get four thirds. That's the estimation of my acceleration at time 13. It's the acceleration because it is an approximation for the slope of the tangent line, given the velocity. Okay. Now, moving on, we want to write the tangent line approximation for the acceleration near t equal to 9. So what are you going to use? Well, I need point and a slope. 
where am I going to get a point from and where am I going to get the slope? Well, the slope is in part number one there. And then if I plug it into my point slope form, I'm going to be in business. So let's find the slope. Okay, so my point, first of all, sorry. If I do my point, it's going to be 9, 8. And then my slope is going to be negative 10 thirds because that's my point of interest. And my slope in around that area is negative 10 thirds. Like I said, some people would get a different answer if they used 9 and 12 before, but this is what we're using. So now I'll just put this in point slope form. I have the general equation written right here. Plug in the point, plug in the slope, and just go. I used negative three and a third there. I probably shouldn't have. But I'll probably use negative ten thirds here in a second. Now, this is a generalization of what we're doing, but more specifically, we're finding a, a tangent line approximation for the velocity. So we're going to use the velocity instead of y, and we're going to use t instead of, no, not x. We're going to use t. So we use t instead of x. So this is an estimation of my velocity function in and around this area, 9, 8. And I bring the 8 over to the other side. Now what I can do with this is I can make estimations. So another thing is they might say, well, what's the velocity approximation at 9.2? Now you can make an educated guess. Plug in the 9.2. I'm not going to do that for you, but there's where we're at. Okay, so this is tangent line approximation using a data table. I had to record over this, so I don't know what I was saying at the time. We need to move on, though. So if we go on to the next part, I think I'm saying, what is this thing? Well, it's approximation for the velocity in and around that area, 9.8. Okay, moving on. Tangent line approximation from a graph using a derivative. So if we use this, this is a graph, and it is f prime. So you got to read and make sure, are you looking at f or are you looking at f prime? They also gave us information about a point. So part A says find f prime of 3 and f double prime of 3. Well, if it's f prime of 3, and they gave us the graph of f prime of 3, we just read it right off the graph. What is that point? Well, it looks like 3, 1 to me. So that might trivialize some other parts later. But f prime of 3 turns out to be 1. Now, if we do f double prime of 3, well, that's the slope of f prime. So we have to find the slope of this line in and around that area of 3. Well, if you do rise over run, and it's down to the right, this would be negative one-half. So I'm decreasing. My y's go down one as my x's go down two. Okay, then the next part, part b, find the tangent line 2f at x equal to 3. So what do we need? Well, we need the point, and we need the slope. To what? Well, I need the point from f, and I need the slope, which is f prime of 3. So now I'm looking for the point. Where's the point? What point am I going to use? I got so many flying around here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, that's the point on f. So 3 comma negative 4. So that's the point that I'm going to use, and then the slope is going to be the 1 up here from f prime of 3. And then I'm going to just plug in chug. There's my tangent line approximation. For part C, we want to approximate what happens at 3.05. I trust that you can plug in 3.05 there for x and solve for y. That's all you have to do. Now, moving on to our last part. Tangent line approximations from an implicitly defined function. Really, this is just the same thing, but... People get messed up a little bit. We want to find the slope. 
I already have the point, but I need the slope using dy dx implicitly written. So to write the tangent line approximation for this, you take the point, 2, 3, and then the slope, how do I do that? Well, dy dx is defined in terms of both 2 and 3. So I need to plug in the 2 for the x and the 3 for the y. I get really scared when I do these simple calculations because I tend to make mistakes. So hopefully I didn't. But I get negative 6 sevenths. So all you do now is plug this into my point slope form again. And the nice thing about using like negative 6 sevenths as my slope, I don't have to simplify. This is my tangent line approximation. The only time that you would solve for y possibly is if they tell you, hey, I want y. y equals to something. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this helps you satisfy some things with tangent line approximations.